Hey guys, it's Tanya with Tanya Watson Studio and today I'm going to be sharing a tutorial on how to make a mini art journal or zine. This one I'm using to celebrate 30 days of gratitude this month. It's my birthday month and I just want to make sure that I stay focused on gratitude. I had so much fun making this project and I hope that you will join me in learning how to do it too. Uh, some of the supplies that you'll need are obviously some paper. I used a 9 by 12 uh, sheet of mixed media paper. It's really nice thickness and accepts a lot of different mediums really well. And in addition to that, I did tape my page down to the table so that I had a nice clean edge and my paper didn't move around when I got all messy with it. I've got some paints, some gesso in black and white, totally optional, not necessary though. And a catalyst, I just got this at the art store so I wanted to play with it. But again, you can just use an old gift card or paintbrush to spread your paint and your gesso. Some paint brushes. My jelly plate, which I love playing with, love creating with my jelly plate. And a stamp that I'm obsessed with right now. It's like this fun animal print, but you could use any stamps or stencils that you wanted to. And then obviously to bind your journal, you're going to need a pretty thick needle, some thick thread, and I don't know, I forgot what you call these, but a little pokey thing to make holes um, to thread the needle through. And I think that's about it. So I hope you'll join me in watching the tutorial and be sure and tag me at Tanya Watson Studio. If you make one, I'd love to see your finished projects. So whenever I'm starting a project, one of the first things I like to do is just scribble on the page to loosen up. So here I'm using a black Neo Color 2 crayon and I'm just scribbling all over the page. Next, I'm just grabbing some gesso and spreading it onto the page with my catalyst. I just got this at the art supply store, so I'm kind of enjoying playing with it. But if you don't have one of these, you can just use an old gift card or a bank card. I do this to kind of prime the paper a little bit, but it's not a requirement. You can also just use paint. Now I'm gonna grab some black gesso and use my catalyst again to spread it on the paper. At this point, I'm not really worried about the composition because this page is going to get folded up, so it really won't matter what the composition is. I'm really just kind of having fun and spreading paint um, on the page. Really, you could use any color, but for uh, my page, I just decided to keep it really simple and contrasting. So now I'm going to grab uh, my black ink spray and just add a few splatters to my paper. And I'm going to make sure that I leave some areas uh, blank so that I have some space to work in when I make my journal pages. And then I'm going to grab a Neo Color 2 white crayon and scribble some abstract flowers and leaf shapes just to add some visual interest to the background. I'm not really worried about them being perfect because again we're going to be cutting up this page. Now it's time for some stamps. Here I'm gonna use one of my favorite stamps, which is this fun animal print. But you can use any stamps or stencils that you have on hand. The point is just to try and make as many different marks on the page as you can. Just play with different tools that you might have on hand. Maybe it's a twig. Like I said, maybe it's some stencils. It's really just to add as much visual interest and variety as you can. If you don't have any ink on hand or if you don't have a color that you want to use, you can also use paint with your stamps. Here I'm just dipping my animal print stamp into some white paint so I can get some of the print on the black background. Just remember to clean the paint off your stamp before it dries. So my page is pretty covered up at this point, but I'm going to water down some of this white gesso that I have left over and add some splatters to my background um, because, I mean, who doesn't love splatters on the page? Okay, so I'm feeling like this page is looking pretty good. Um, later on, I did end up going back and adding some pink paint to this page because I thought it needed some color, but for now, I'm just going to work on the other side. So 
So now my paper is flipped over and I have taped down the edges so that it won't move around when I go to work on the other side. Okay, so basically what we wanna do is just kind of do the same thing to the other side of our paper so that our journal pages ended up with some paint on both sides of the pages. And I'm just gonna go ahead and paint the pages or make marks like you did before. You can use different colors if you'd like, or it's probably good to use some coordinating colors so all of your pages kind of look cohesive. But I'm going to go ahead and speed things up a bit here so you can just see the process of how I covered the back. Okay, so now you can see how I've added some pink paint to the first side and the back side is all done too. And so now it's time to turn this piece of paper into an art journal. So first what we want to do is fold our paper in half with the short sides touching. Okay, so while you're folding the paper, you want to make sure to crease the fold really well so that it's easier to tear in half later. You can use a paper trimmer if you want to, but I like to just wing it. Now we want to very carefully tear the paper in half down the fold. Now we want to grab one of our halves and fold it in half with the long sides touching. Then take the folded page and fold it on itself again, this time with the short sides touching. Be sure to really crease your folds each time. And then finally fold it one more time on itself with the short sides touching. And we want to repeat this for the other piece of paper that we tore as well. And this is going to mark our journal pages. Once you've folded both halves, Go ahead and stack them onto each other and make sure to line up the edges of your folded papers. Um, then you're gonna wanna grab your awl to make three holes in the middle fold. This is how we're going to bind our pages together. So we're gonna make a hole in the middle, one near the end, and then one near the opposite end. Now it's time to bind our journal. So we're going to take our threaded needle and measure four times the width down the middle of our journal to figure out how much string we need. Now we're gonna take that needle and thread and poke it through the middle hole in the fold. Pull it all the way through, leaving a little tail. Then take your needle and thread it through the top hole from the back side of the journal. Pull the needle all the way through and skip the middle hole 
and then thread the needle again through the bottom hole and pull it out through the back. Finally, take the needle and put it back through the middle hole. Be sure to cut off any excess thread, but leave a little tail. Take the tails and pull them taut and tie them in a knot to secure them. Yay, we just bound our journal. So since we folded our paper down to make smaller pages, we need to cut the folds so that they can actually be the pages of our journal. So I'm just gonna grab my scissors and start cutting any of the folds that I see, except for the middle one, of course. So you're just gonna keep continuing to find the folds and cut through them. Um, I'm gonna go ahead and speed up this process so that I don't bore you, but you just wanna go through, flip through the pages and look for any folds and cut through them. And don't forget, don't cut through the middle. Congratulations, you just made a mini gratitude art journal. I used this journal to record something I was grateful for each day for 30 days, and it was perfect because this journal makes exactly 30 pages, so you can use it for any 30-day challenge. Here's a quick flip through of our finished journal. I hope you enjoyed watching this video, and I hope you try this project for yourself. Till next time, happy journaling!